All right, let's talk about binomial distribution. All of these examples so far, it, the coin toss, so the coin toss and the test questions are examples of what we call a binomial distribution. To have a binomial distribution or experiment, we must meet the following conditions. The first, the number of trials, which in this case for our questions would have been 20 questions or 20 coin flips. should be known, so we can't have an infinite amount of items happening. We, we did have a restriction of 20, so we meet that condition, and must be of a random experiment. So it must have a random variable in it. That's defined. Every single trial should be independent. Now, we might have failed a little bit in that, but we should have where each item doesn't influence the second one. So we can't have questions in the quiz that says, based on your answer to, your la to the last question, et cetera. Every single guess that you make should be truly independent and truly random. Each trial can only have two outcomes. That's where the word binomial comes from. Bi means of two, and nomial means name. For those of you in computer science, it's like saying binary. So we can only have two outcomes, which we usually outline as a success or failure. In our coin toss, we had heads and tails, where tails was success and heads was failure. In our questions, we had right versus wrong, where 25% of the time you could have a success rate of the correct answer, there's only one of them, and 75% you had a failure um, because it was the other three answers that were not correct. So we always have to break it down into two different categories. And the last qualification is that the probability of the outcomes remains the same in each trial. So that happened, each coin toss, the probability of having heads or tails was 50% each time. In the questions, there were always four possible answers. So the outcome or probability of getting a correct answer is always 25%. In a binomial distribution, we cannot change the probability um, for each trial, it has to be exactly the same. And a binomial distribution is just like the distributions we've seen. It's just going to demonstrate the probabilities or outcomes of conducting a binomial experiment. They look very similar to the normal distributions, as you'll see. 